Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and if you ever wondered how the flight controller works inside, this is the video for you. To make things clear, no, I will not explain to you in the next probably around 10 to 15 minutes how exactly flight controller works because this is the topic for at least a series of one hour lectures. So instead of that we're gonna concentrate on the most basic and most important part of every flight controller on the stabilization routine. The routine that uses the gyroscope information, the information about the rotation rate read by the gyroscope and the stick input and uses this to stabilize your multirotor or the aeroplane. We will not talk about the autonomous mode, we will not talk about the modes with self-leveling like for example angle or horizon, we only will be talking about how exactly in the great simplification the PID mixer filtering and the radio filtering is working and let me change the camera, get some white board yes actually this is the white board and some markers and let's start drawing before we begin another disclaimer this example will be based on the quadcopter multi-rotor drone not hexa not airplane but at the end it almost the same the only difference is in the mixer but to make things simpler we're gonna talk only about the multi-rotor quadcopter drone only in the acro mode without self-leveling only with stabilization if we take a look at the flight controller it looks more or less like this here we have the magical black box called the flight controllers and four motors m1 m2 m3 and m4 and additionally, because we would like to be able to tell the flight controller to do something for us, here we have the receiver. Receiver transmits the position of the sticks to the flight controller and the flight controller does some kind of the black box magic and sends the information to four motors with the information how fast the motors should be rotating and how much thrust the propellers should be delivering to the whole system. Simple, simple. However, internally it's slightly more important. If we will remove this simple graph, then the whole graph, the whole flow starts to look slightly, slightly, slightly more complex. First of all, probably you've heard about something about the PID. Yes, this magical PID controller that does some magic and thanks to the PID our drones and airplanes are flying super smooth and super fantastic. If you would like to know exactly what the PID controller is, there is a video made by me that explains what the PID. For now we'll just assume that this is proportional integral derivative controller that converts the input based on the information on the actual state to some kind of the output that then is doing something. Before we will go into the output side of the PID controller, here with the information from what is outputted from the PID controller, let's take a look to what's inserted into the PID controller. First of all, it's the set point. Set point. Set point is the position of the sticks. If you take your radio and you will move the roll stick to the right, the information about the set point that you ordered a rotation right rotation to the right is received from the receiver, converted to a set point and fed into the PID controller. Exactly the same information, not the same, the same applies to the measurement. Measurement, which is Yes, measurement is the rotation rate read by the gyroscope on 
your drone. There is every drone, every multi-rotor, almost every airplane with the stabilization has a small gyroscope that reads the rotation rate in degrees per second in the roll, pitch and the yaw axis, combines this with the information from the stick on the roll stick, pitch stick and the yaw stick. I'm using this of course as the mode to user. Fed this data into the PID controller. PID controller compares the current measurements, current rotation rate from the gyro with the information obtained from the stick, what you want the multi-rotor to do, and produces some kind of the output. Then this output is fed to the mixer. Mixer, you heard about the mixer, probably you heard about the mixer once or twice, and only then information from the mixer is fed to four motors. One, two, three, and no, this is three, and this is four. You might say, well, but this is absurdly simple, there is no magic happening over there. Aren't you forgetting about something? Yes, I'm forgetting about something because we also have the fourth set point. And this is throttle. Throttle position, also received from the radio, is fed. But the throttle position is not set fed to the PID controller or the motors directly. Throttle position is fed to the mixer. And only based on this information, the mixer is able to compute the output of the motors. We will go to the mixer in a slight moment. Now it's time to complicate the graph, because this is not really how it works. There is not one PID controller, there is not one set point and there is no one measurement. There are three PID controllers for each axis separately, three measurements and three set points. This means that we can easily remove this part as obsolete and change it into PIDX, PIDY and PID. Z, when X is for roll, Y is for pitch, and Z is for roll. Output of the all three controllers is fed to the mixer together with the throttle to produce the output for the motors. There is a separate, I'm just gonna use the one letter abbreviations. There is measurement X and set point X which are fed into the PIDX controller. There is a measurement X and set point X fed in, not X, Y. Pavel, please concentrate. I know it's late, but it, it's not the excuse. And there is separate measurement Z and set point Z fed to the YO controller. And uh, this is the basic setup. This is how the multi-rotor drones were flying six years ago with the first versions of the multi-Y. There is a gyro reading on the roll axis and the set point on the roll axis fed to the PID on the roll axis. Then this output together with pitch axis and the Z axis fed to the mixer. Throttle also is fed to a mixer and the mixer produces the output for the four motors. However, if we will take a look at the modern flight controller, we will know that the throttle is not right now not only fed to the mixer, because right now throttle is very often also fed to the PID controllers because PID controllers can slightly adjust their output based on the throttle position. For example, anti-gravity is nothing else than a slight boost in the item processing when the throttle was pulled down. And to make things more interesting, also output from the mixer, let me take another marker, also the output from the mixer can be fed to the 
PID controller. I'm not sure if I will have enough space to draw it, but okay. Why? Because the PID controllers, the RAID PID controllers, three separate PID controllers, also have the routines that are responsible for something called the anti windup. This is a situation when one of the motors reaches its peak output. This means that probably the current rate is not not achievable by the system and that means that PID controllers, the I term on the on this ax on the axis should be limited because if not the I term will wind up to the super high or super low value and when the response will there will be an order to stop the movement it will do a follow through it will bring the unnecessary wobble to the, to the setup. So, on the modern flight controllers, not only the throttle is fed to the mixer, but also information from the mixer is fed to the PID controller that one of the motors is saturated, and also the information about the throttle is fed to the PID controllers. Simple? Well, slightly more complicated. Of course, we could now go into the details and, for example, draw the same setup, for example, for the, I don't know, for the hexa. Guess what? What will be the difference in case of the hexa or an octa or the hex X or the hex flat or the Y hexa? Many different aircrafts, even, but even the same, what will be the how this graph will look like for an aeroplane. Will there be any differences? Well, guess what? This is extremely simple. The, the stabilization is almost always only this part of the whole flow. The only difference between different time of the aeroplanes or drones or UAVs or rovers or boat is the mixer because the mixer is the only part of the whole flight controller that is aware of how many motors how many servos or how many actuators are installed on the hardware and how each of the actuators should respond to the input from the flight controller so if for example we would like to have a hexa then it will be exactly the same, only instead of four motors, we would have six motors connected like that. Um, what if we want to have a tricopter instead of the hexa or the quadcopter? Once again, the PID controller, the stabilization loop is always the same because it always works on roll pitch yaw and the medium that translates your pitch low, roll pitch yaw to the motors or the servos is the mixer. So, for example, in case of the three copter, we would have three motors and one servo. And that's all. There are no special modification of this part. The only modification is inside of the mixer. Another thing that is worth mentioning is that there are filters in the loop. Why? Because on the everything that flies and has propellers, everything vibrates and the gyro is always picking some kind of the, of the noise from the propellers, from the resonance on the frame, whatever there might be. And this noise is introduced into the information about the current rotation rate of the air aircraft let's call it an aircraft but not only an aircraft this is why the one of the hardest aspects of the current uh, flight controllers and to be all to be honest the most processor power required required with the highest demand on the current processing power of the flight controllers is the filtering because the gyro signal on each axis on the roll pitch and the yaw has to be filtered usually by more than one filter than once because we can have some kind of the dynamic filter rpm filter we can have kalman filter which is always a very very computational hungry filters we have notches we have dynamic lpfs we have different different filters here and there running every filter running three times because there are three accesses also internally each of the PID controllers 
can have and usually has filters on the D term because without the filters on the D terms we would have to replace our motors after each flight because D term always wants to kill your motors and to burn them. Also, currently current generations of the flight controllers also have filters usually only lpfs or some kind of the interpolation uh, routine on the set point information because we want the signal coming from the radio as smooth as possible and with as less, as little delay as possible so when you move the stick and um, there is no spike, there is no derivative kick in and the whole process is as smooth as possible. This is why we filter measurements from the gyro, we filter stick input, we filter D-term, we filter accelerometer, which also is used over there and we filter a lot of different aspects because even the uh, for example, the anti-gravity is additional filter on the throttle. The D-term, uh, the mean or the D-boost in the, uh, how it's called, in the INA for the, in the beta flight, is also additional filter on the measurement. And on, this, uh, on the measurement, yes. And for example, the item relax means that there is extra filter one more filter on the measurement. So the flight controller is about the PIDs and the mixer, but mainly currently the flight controller is about the filtering. There are so many filters inside that, well, we will not talk about the filters today. However, the last aspect I would like to, I would like to briefly talk to you is about the mixer. The mixer is um, it's a matrix because the input to the mixer, uh, stabilization meter, mixer, and it doesn't matter if this is a motor mixer or the servo mixer, is just a different notation of the same problem. It's the information. There is input on the roll, there is input on the pitch, and uh, there is input on the yaw, and there is input on the throttle, and those four inputs provided to the mixer from the throttle and the separate PID controllers, like we were seeing just before, is translated into the motor output. That means for every motor we have a rule. If this is a weight, this is really like a multiplier for the input of every every for every every axis. So, for example, the mixer, here we have, here we have mixer 1 on the roll, 0 on pitch, minus 1 on the yaw, and 1 on the throttle. That means if roll is, uh, this input to the mixer on the roll is above 0, then this input should be moved to this motor. If the pitch is ignored, we multiply the input on the pitch by zero, so it's zero, because for this, for example, for this motor there is no pitch input, because let's, let's imagine we have the X configuration and we are describing this motor over here, and of course the, the quad flights like this, so this motor has no authority on the pitch, so we set zero on this, and for example, uh, on the yaw there is minus one, so the in output from the PID on the yaw axis should be inverted and then added to the roll axis and multiply by the throttle input to provide the... So here we have sum. No, this is sum. This, is, this goes like this. And okay, we can draw it like that. So we have a sum of on all of those elements that provides us the information how this specific motor should react to the input. This is why the stabilization is independent on what you fly, only the mixer is aware of how many motors you have. If, for example, this motor would be rotating instead of rotating clockwise to the counterclockwise rotation, the only change in the mixer that has to be applied for this one motor is, guess what? Instead of setting one on the yaw axis, we set min minus one, we change the, 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 the sign on the, on the weight. This is the information that this motor should not spin up when we want to yaw right, but should slow down when we want to yaw right. 
if there are four motors, there are four, four rules, uh, one for each motor. If there are six motors, there are just six rules. Of course, at the end, the motor configuration and the servo configuration has to make sense. If it doesn't make sense, then every mixer will just make this thing fall from the sky. And uh, I think we come to the end of this 15 and something minutes of the explanation of how modern flight controllers are working. If you want to know more about the details of the flight controllers, please thumbs up and comment. Yeah, I want more. Please do more of those scientific um, scientific, uh, right, scientific uh, videos, because uh, I like doing them, but if there is no demand for such a, such a materials, then, well, you know. Okay, um, that's all for today. Until the next one. Bye-bye.